Hello guys, I'm Yadik Reddy and welcome to my channel HVI Tutorials. In this video, I'm going to talk about these three attributes called invocation count, invocation timeout and thread pool size in TestNG. So these three are the attributes that are available inside test annotation in TestNG. So as we already know, there are so many annotations available in TestNG. So out of all those annotations, test annotation is one of the important annotation. So for the test annotation, there are so many attributes available. And we have already discussed about some of the attributes in our previous videos. So if you haven't watched my previous videos, please go and watch those videos so that you will get a clear understanding like what are the attributes that we already covered and what is the use of that and how to use them and all, right? So then come back to this video and learn these things, guys. If you haven't covered those things there, please go and watch them and then come back to this video. So if you have already completed those things, continue with this video. So in this video, we are going to cover the remaining attributes called invocation count, invocation timeout and thread pool size. So basically these three are interrelated guys. So that is why I'm going to explain about these three attributes in the same video. Fine. So this is the agenda for today's session guys. So for every of this attribute, we are going to ask the questions like what, why and how. So that is the points here basically. What is invocation count? Why we need the invocation count and how to use the invocation count? And then what, what is invocation timeout and why we need the invocation timeout and how to use the invocation timeout. And then what is thread pool size, why we need the thread pool size and how to use the thread pool size. So we are going to cover all these points inside this video guys. So without wasting any time, let's get started. So first before explaining any of these points, I want to explain one scenario, then I'll come to these points guys. Fine. So let me open the Eclipse. So here I have created one class and I have created one test method inside that class. Nothing fancy guys. I have created one class and I have created one test method in that and I have added some script. So let me tell you what exactly this script will do. So there is this website called random user. So let me take you to that. So this is the website guys. So there is a website called randomuser.me. What exactly it will do is whenever you hit this web page, it will create one random user with some information in it. So it will have the random user name and email address, birth date and address and phone number and the password. So first suppose in your application, you want to create some users and you don't know how to get the user details. Okay. Maybe you don't have any fake data. So in that scenario, what you can do, you can utilize this website and just hit this website. And whenever you hit it, it will create a new user, right? So you can just copy paste these details into your application and you create your own users, right? So this is one of the best way to do that. So that is why I want to hit this website multiple times. Maybe I want to store all this user information into one Excel file or maybe just print it in the console. Okay. So the basic agenda here is I want to hit this website based upon how many number of users I want. So let's say if I want 10 users, I need to hit this website for 10 times. If I want five users, I want to hit this website for five times, right? So how do I perform that? So here I have added the code only to open this website and just uh, only for one iteration I have ad actually added. It will click on the username details and it will print the username text in the console and then email address also it will print in the console. Fine. So this is for one iteration. And what if I want to hit the same website five times? So the same piece of code, nothing is going to change here, right? So the same logic I need to use and I need to hit it five times. So what I'm going to do, it's very easy. You need to just implement any looping mechanism here, right? So either for loop or for each loop or while loop or any loop based upon our requirement. So basically here the for loop with index will be suitable, right? So I can just implement one for loop like this and you will be thinking like this, right? So you can implement one for loop and you just mention five here and the same piece of code, you place it inside the for loop and it will be executed five times and you get the five username details also. That is what you are thinking, right? So yes, that is correct. Somewhat that is correct. So it will do the work, but there are some implications here, guys. So there are some problems involved in this. So what are those problems? The first problem is if suppose due to some synchronization issue or something, if one of the iteration is failed, what about the rest of the iterations? It will not continue with the rest of the iterations, right? Because when there is an exception occurred inside the test method, it will just come out of the test method. So let's say if there is an exception inside the third iteration, then it will not execute fourth and fifth iterations here. It will just simply come out of this test method. Correct? Because this is just a for loop, it doesn't know like, okay, I need to execute the same test five times even though there is an exception. It doesn't know that way, right? So it will just come out of the test method. 
so it will not execute fourth and fifth iteration in that scenario right and there is no way you can track this information each and every iteration wise right even though if you are executing five iterations if you look at the test ng result it will show you only one test run right so there is no way you can track these informations right so for all these things test ng is providing you one beautiful feature called invocation guys so you no need to place the, your code inside the for loop because if you place your code inside the for loop there are some implications happening right so you cannot track the informations and if there is one iteration failed other iterations will not be executed so all these issues are there right so to avoid all these issues test ng is providing one feature called invocation so using this invocation concept you can execute the same piece of code multiple times and yet you can track each and every iteration and if one iteration is failed also it will not halt it will continue with the next iterations so that kind of beautiful concept it has actually introduced so that is called invocation so if you look at here what is invocation count invocation count is a parameter or attribute which tells the test method like how many number of times the same test method should be invoked or it should be executed so it's a parameter guys okay why do we need the invocation count so obviously if you are using for loop or something any other loop you are having some issues right so to avoid all those issues you need the invocation count so basically the invocation count will help you in executing the same test multiple times and next how to use the invocation count so let me show you that so this invocation count is a attribute inside the test annotation right so you know how to use the attributes already so you just open the parenthesis and close the parenthesis and within that you mention the attribute name so the attribute name here is invocation count so you need to specify the invocation count in the form of integer value guys so this invocation count will accept the integer values so how many number of times you want to actually execute this test so that count you need to specify here so let's say i want to execute the same test for three times then i can just mention it as three so if i execute this the same test will run for three times even though due to some synchronization issue or something if my test fails also it will still continue with the next iteration if it, if the second iteration is failed it will still continue with the third iteration you can track the individual iteration status also guys let me show you that so let this completed so now the execution is completed and if you see total test runs are three this time it is showing three but if you are using for loop it won't show you three it will show you only one guys fine and in the test ng result also you can see each and every iteration how much time it took also you can track fine so this is the beauty of invocation count okay you can track your each and every iteration and if one iteration is failed also it will still continue with the next iterations so that is the beauty of invocation count and the next one is invocation timeout so in our previous video one of the video we have already covered about timeout right so what exactly a timeout is so if you are executing any test method how much maximum time the test method should take that can be controlled by the timeout parameter right so it is the exact same thing guys but it's just coming with the invocation things that means so for all the invocation counts how much time maximum it should take so that you can actually restrict using invocation timeout so let's say i have three invocations here and i am expecting all the three invocations should be completed within 10 seconds fine so let me just provide 10 seconds here also you need to provide the time in the milliseconds format guys so whatever the time that you want to provide just convert it into milliseconds and then provide so when i say 10000 it means 10 seconds here so let me execute the same so if the invocations are not being executed within 10 seconds then it will fail the test fine so let's see whether it will complete within 10 seconds or not you see within 10 seconds it's actually not completed so two by three only two are executed out of three and it's not completed so it marked the test as failed right so that is about the invocation timeout so this invocation timeout will restrict the entire invocations execution time fine and one more important thing is if you don't mention the invocation time and if you mention only invocation timeout it is just a useless parameter guys so just like in our previous video in parallel execution what we did if you don't mention the parallel attribute if you specify thread count it is useless right the thread count is only useful when you provide the parallel attribute value correct so in our previous video we have already discussed this point right 
so this thread count is only useful when you provide the parallel attribute value so in the similar way this invocation timeout is useful only when you provide the invocation count if you don't specify the invocation count this parameter is useless it will not be considered fine and the last one is thread pool size so what exactly this thread pool size is it's the same concept as this thread count guys so here whatever the test or whatever the classes that you want to actually execute and if you specify the thread count in those many threads it will be executed right so the similar concept here you need to apply for the invocations so whatever the invocations that you are planning if you want to distribute them in the threaded mode then you can go for the thread pool size you can specify how many number of threads you want and on how many number of threads you want these invocations to be executed and it will be executed based on that right so let's just write thread pool size thread pool size as maybe 2 and here i'm just mentioning as 4 then what happens i want to invoke the same test method four times but with only two threads that means at single point of time two invocations will be happening right so that is the concept here let's just execute this and you can see so you see two threads are actually running here and now one is completed and again two threads are running so the same concept guys just like how the thread count is actually used in parallel execution the same concept is used here but only for the invocation count this thread pool size parameter is only useful when invocation count is provided fine so all these three are interrelated like that so now you see all the four executions are completed and you can also see the result individual status also fine so this thread pool size is used to create the number of threads for invocation count so when you specify invocation count those many times your test method will be invoked right if those invocation has to be distributed on a multi-threaded mode then you need to specify the thread pool size here so these are the three parameters guys so invocation count and then invocation timeout and thread pool size invocation count lets you decide how many number of times your test method should execute and invocation timeout will let you decide how much time it has to maximum wait to complete all these invocations and thread pool size is used for creating those many threads for your invocations fine so i hope you understand this video so if you like this video please hit the like button and also share this video with your friends thank you for watching bye bye